If anybody had told me two years ago that I would still be looking to shoot my first gobbler today, I probably would have never started with this whole thing. I should have just like stayed still and let him roost. My experience should serve as a warning to anybody who is setting out to start turkey hunting that it is not going to be easy. Now, before we get into this turkey hunting story, I wanted to let you guys know that we currently have our quarterly giveaway going on. And this time around, we're giving away a Summit Viper SD climbing tree stand. And you can win it for free. And all you have to do to enter is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and drop a comment on this video right here. And this video also has the rest of the rules as well as a couple of ways that you can get a couple extra entries into the raffle. So today is opening morning of turkey season in the south zone of Florida. I'm heading out to Big Cypress, which is cool because I don't spend too much time in Big Cypress. I honestly didn't have time to go scout it. We've got some quotas coming up for turkey season uh, that we've been pretty focused on, but I kind of figured I can't let opening day slip by me. I was gonna go to one spot, the spot that I had hunted before, but my buddy called me yesterday and uh, he told me that he'd been scouting and he had a, two birds uh, somewhat roosted and he just found out that he's not gonna be able to hunt opening weekend. He figured if he wasn't gonna get to kill them uh, that he'd prefer if a buddy of his would get shot at them. So I'm gonna head out there and uh, do my best. What I told him is that it was a pretty good strategy to have me go out and hunt them because chances are pretty high that I'll just end up scaring the crap out of them and they'll make it through the first weekend so they'll still be here when he gets back. Running a little late. I ended up having a, a little trouble finding the trail I wanted to use. But I'm walking out right now. Still got a little bit of darkness left, so I'm just hitting the hoot call on my way in just to make sure I don't accidentally get too close to this bird I'm looking for. I haven't heard him yet. I'm still uh, about a quarter of a mile away from the area I want to be, so um, I gotta keep trucking along. See that cypress knee right there? I just tripped over that shit. That shit hurt. Oh. I learned this lesson every single time. When you're walking through the woods, you're planning a route, just plan the easiest looking route. Because you think to yourself, oh, it might be easy, it might not. It's always not. This route sucks. I'm spent. I gotta keep going though. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. It's not like I can stop right here. I haven't heard a bird. But I'm right in the area where I saw him last. It rained yesterday. <clears throat> there's, there's relatively flat fresh tracks right here. This little clearing in front of me. So set up the decoy. I'm gonna sit and wait. Call very little. Hopefully there's a bird nearby. Mm. See what happens. And come all the way out here just to hike back to the car injured. I hear people talking about how exciting it is to have a gobbler coming in. I cannot imagine that killing a turkey is gonna be anywhere near as satisfying as the feeling when a buck walks out 
in front of your tree stand. The adrenaline rush that you get. There's nothing that compares to that. Oh my God. <laughs> but hearing other deer hunters talk about turkey hunting like it's just as good, if not better, that makes me really want to shoot a turkey. So I came out to a spot that during deer season was full of turkeys. And of course now that it's turkey season, all I've seen is deer. But I'm gonna start moving, find a different area. Um, it's pretty dry out here, so I'm gonna go try and find an area that's close to a creek so that there's water around. Dude, the other one's coming to fight, bro. This is about to be a f***ing showdown. Oh. Oh. Dude, he sees that other turkey. I'm not happy about it, dude. Dude, dude, dude that other turkey's in strut, bro. Right? That other turkey's in strut. They're gonna go at it, dude. They're totally gonna go at it. Found a couple birds this morning. We're gonna head in right now. Um, we're just gonna set up the way that we would tomorrow morning. We're just gonna listen and hopefully figure out where these birds are roosting. If we can figure out exactly where they're roosting, tomorrow's tomorrow's gonna be good.
So I've literally covered like 20 miles today on the e-bike, just cruising around. I have seen a number of turkeys. I have spooked them every time, but it's weird. It's like, I'm not finding any sign. It just seems like it's so dry here that they don't leave any sign behind. <clears throat> I'm gonna check out one more spot, but I think tomorrow I'm just gonna have to listen for a gobble in the areas where I know I've seen birds. It's kind of funny. The dictionary defines insanity as trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So in a way, turkey hunting is basically insanity. Because every night, we go to a spot that we think birds might roost nearby, that we can hear, and we listen for gobbles. And every night, we don't hear gobbles. And without knowing where the birds are the night before, you go in blind and hope for the best and sit near where there's tracks. And we sit down and we hear nothing. And then after walking around trying to find any sign of birds or any bird that wants to respond, which usually ends up being a bunch of hens or something like that, after we do all that, we just repeat the process and go right back to listening. <laughs> Those two deer sat there 20 yards away from me for about an hour and a half. But no more turkeys showed up. <clears throat> so... It was time for a Hail Mary. Two days before, I uh, had spooked a hen in a completely different area. And it just, there was a lot of activity in that area. I had seen deer, I'd seen uh, a couple turkeys, some hogs, all kinds of game. And so I figured, you know, if there's other game around, there's got to be a reason for that. So I... Uh, Headed to the back of this trail where I had spooked up a turkey and um, we went and set up there. And so, when I went down there yesterday where I spooked up that hen, she flew out that way. But there's like all this marshy stuff. Like there's an oak head and then there's like a marsh and then an oak head on the other side. And I haven't explored the other, that oak head yet. Um, and that's kind of where I want to go. So, you know, I wasn't really expecting anything to happen. And then I hear Danny, Mark, Mark. And I look over and he's like, turkeys. Two of them are fighting each other. And there's this one big one off to the right. You can't see him in this footage, but... He had a big old head on him, but that's all I could see was a big old head and the sun, the light was behind it. So that head just looked like a big black head to me. You know, I had a feeling that it was a gobbler, but <clears throat> if I didn't see a beard, I wasn't going to pull the trigger. I had my bead right on him, but again, I, uh, I didn't want to cheat this thing. I wanted it to be legit. And I couldn't see a beard, so I didn't shoot. Well, Danny, because he was sitting where he was sitting, we weren't able to communicate, and he wasn't able to tell me that when he first saw them, he looked over because he heard drumming. And that big turkey was all puffed up and drumming. And if I had known that, I would have shot it. Those hens flew up to roost in a few oaks that were close by. I didn't see that gobbler fly up, but 
there wasn't a whole lot of options for him. He had to fly up somewhere near there. And so we came back in the morning, heard a couple of hens cackle on their way down. But we didn't put eyes on any of them. But there's not much that's going to stop me from eventually figuring it out. I have to keep trying. I have to figure this thing out. So I have two weeks left of this season. I'm going to try and get it done. But for now, that's all I got. Appreciate everybody listening to my story. Thank you guys for supporting Swamp and Stomp. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should do that now by clicking over here somewhere. Because there's going to be more to this story, hopefully ending with a gobbler on the ground before the end of the season. And if you're interested in seeing some of our other videos, they're somewhere around here.